Alright, so we're coming up on Christmas time. Oh, welcome to the Free Will channel. And uh, it's where we try to bring awareness to conscious action versus compulsive action. And hopefully that's wide enough view that it's going to work well. The new camera. One of the things that Christ taught us, or tried to teach us, was that God is love. God loves you. God forgives you for being human. God, if, if you repent, if you are sorry for what you've done, you have to know that God's already forgiven you, and we need to learn to forgive ourselves. There was a lot of things that I held on to for a long time about things that I had done that I, I didn't feel I could be forgiven for. You know, kind of shitty things. And you look back and you're like, wow, I'd never do that again. I, I totally don't know where that came from, whether it was out of greed, whether it was out of lust, whether it was out of um, wrath, or, you know, one of the sins, basically. You know, it's the things that we do that, that don't connect us and keep us aligned with God. And so forgiveness is a huge obstacle for many people because they haven't forgiven themselves for something and so for somebody else to have done something horrible it's hard to forgive them we have to realize that me and we are reflections you know if me is sitting at the uh, edge of a pond, my reflection is we. There's a... Um, there's tools that help us to learn forgiveness. And sometimes tools are ideas. And ideas we got to figure a simple thought heard out loud can shift the course of humanity. So if an idea is a tool, the action is how we use it, right? And so if I have an idea that somebody else might have a different perspective of the same thing as I do, and if I have a different perspective from them, I might be calling it a nine and while well, they're seeing it as a six. And so we start to look at things and if we can if we can recognize our ability of seeing it from the other person's perspective, we can actually, I think, learn forgiveness because we're seeing, we're kind of walking that mile in their shoes. And so I, I've, I've learned a lot about meditation and yoga and how it can work to help us recognize that right now moment. First off, you know, when you something happens, you've got to breathe, you got to go, okay, can I look it up? Can I look at this, this experience from all perspectives? Uh, let me give you an example. So I, I had gone to a yard sale and uh, it was the last day of the yard sale, and you could tell that the person was just really wanting to get rid of their stuff. And there was a bearskin rug. And I always thought it'd be cool to have a bearskin rug hanging up on the, on the wall, but I didn't really want to go out in the woods and shoot one because I've heard the meat doesn't even taste that great, or it's like really fatty. Um, so just the idea of just going out there to shoot it, just to skin it, to throw it on my wall, I didn't, I didn't go for that too much. But found it at a yard sale, and it was only $75. And there was some tears to it. It wasn't perfect, but it's going to work for my my intent per, my intentive purposes. Well, I went and uh, I placed it on my bench in the back of my garage, and I was thinking that that was a pretty safe place to store it until I uh, put it up on the wall. Well, then I I went to town and I was gone for five or six hours, and I I put the dogs in the garage. You know, as I figured, I'm like, oh, what I normally do. And so uh, I put the dogs in the garage and they were happy. And well, about six hours later, I, I come home and the dogs, they all meet me at the door and they're like, oh my God, you're so, we're so happy that you're here. Did you know what happened? And I looked over 
and there was chunks of fur everywhere and uh, part of the backing to the to the bear you know and I first off I mean there was a little bit of part of me that went what are you guys done and then there was another part of me going they met me at the door they were happy they thought they had done a good thing and so I put myself into the dog shoes for a minute and I'm like alright what am I I'm less than three feet tall <clears throat> and I see something scary on that back bench and oh my god I was able to get a hold of one of its toes and I went like this and I pulled him down and I called for the others and they came over and we we took care of that bear that was hiding in your garage you should be thankful where is our steak dinner and I realized I'm like you know <laughs> you're right I didn't introduce you guys to um, something that you could perceive as a threat and so like everything in my life it's my fault you know I I provided the opportunity for that to happen because I wasn't making a conscious decision I'm like oh that big old furry new thing that smells like a <laughs> smells like something dead maybe to a dog um, they might they might want to do something like that no, and that's just like you know some of the people that we allow into our lives if we we recognize their behavior is something that is not what we want to have happen in our life but we keep making space for those people to be there in our life you're you're paying admission to that clown's circus with your energy but you don't have to you can say no clown go away and every time they try to talk to you, and every time they want to borrow money, or every time they want to take your time, you say, no clown, go away. And eventually the clowns just go away and they play in their own little circus. So... When we stop judging, because I judge from the situation right away, <laughs> they, they destroyed my property! Like, my, my things, the things that I want in my life, they destroyed it. And they did it on purpose. But then, I realized that, was that the case? And when I start to recognize a different perspective, it wasn't out of maliciousness that it was done. It was out of benevolence. You know, they, they wanted to have a benefit to the, the outcome. And a dog? Well, I, I don't know if you've ever paid attention, but dog is God backwards. You know, and our dogs, they forgive us. You know, sometimes I, f I forgot, I've been in a hurry, and I, I leave without feeding them. Well, I mean, I, I've had a child, and if I didn't feed her, she, she would let me know. I mean, she was like straight up, hey, I'm hungry, and I wanna eat. And I'm like, all right, good, good for you. You know, speak up if you need something, because <laughs> I might be busy. And so anyway, the dogs, dogs are a reflection of God. God is God forgives us as easily as your dog does. With awareness and desire comes a possibility of change. So if I'm aware of certain things in my life and I really want them to change. I mean, it's not that I'm just complacent and I just get drunk every night, because I've done that before. You get drunk every night because you don't like your life. Well, instead, I realize I can like, I could save a lot of money if I don't buy beer and I can enjoy my life more if I just start changing the things that I don't like in it. And so I stopped drinking and I was like, huh, I'm in a relationship, and instead of us torturing each other for any longer, I should just respectfully talk, talk to her and say, hey, this isn't working for you and it's not working for me. Um, let's go our own ways and let's do it where we don't hate each other because you know, there was at least something that we really enjoyed about each other to have spent so, many, so much time together. But it's time to change. And so... Goodbye, have a good life. And 
I just kept on asking why I do everything in my life a certain way, and then I started recognizing that there was a lot of things I was just doing because it's what I've done. But if I've always done what I've always, ex or if I've always experienced what I, because of what I've always done, if I expect a different experience, I need to change what I do. You know, because there's things that you don't even know that you don't know until you know them, you know? And you understand that you might know a little about a lot of things, but you're unlikely to know everything about anything. So whenever we're, well, we're, we're, we're brought to an awareness of anything, you know, it could be, it could be the way we talk to people. It could be the way we present information. It could be in a way that we handle ourselves to a stimulus from our environment. You know, what if somebody shocks you one day and they've been, they've been really complacent. You know, they, they just allowed you to be who you're being and, and then they, all of a sudden, they blow up at you. And they say, you need to change because this is this, 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 this. And there's a whole list. They made a list of how many things you need to change. Well, some of those, they might hit home. You know, th th that list that they have, the things that they're saying, they might have some truth to them. And so they slash like knives and spears. And they, they hurt our ego because our ego always wants to be right. But what we do with a conscious awareness is we ask ourselves, am I right? Am I right in how I do X, Y, Z, right? And if it's working for us, and if people are regularly complimenting us on, wow, I really appreciate how you handled this situation, or I really, I really found a growth opportunity by, by seeing how you did that. I mean, like, taking, for instance, practice makes perfect, right? So I used to be a plumber, and there's certain, certain uh, techniques with plumbing that if you've done it a hundred times or a thousand times or maybe even more, there's a good chance you're going to make it look like it's magically ac being accomplished. Where somebody else might struggle with it, somebody else flows right through it because they've, they've been there, they've done that. And so if we have an awareness of everything that we do in our life, we build that fluidity, that flow, the realization of that right now moment. That's that conscious behavior versus a compulsive reaction. Have you ever drove through a parking lot? Or drove, you're driving down the road and then all of a sudden the senses are, are peaked by a, like a hamburger um, place or um, barbecue, something, you know, that somebody's like projecting a smell out into your experience and you're, you're just like, oh my gosh, I want some of that. And luckily, you know, um, if that's something that you want to do, they're, they're on every block, every corner, almost, of every block. So there's a lot of opportunities to experience that. So, But if we start doing that compulsively, every time we drive past that corner, we stop into that the burger joint. Well, it's going to cause an effect in us that is either favorable or unfavorable. So if you only drive past that corner every, every six months, it's not going to be much of a problem. If you're driving by that corner two or three times a day, it might be a problem. The thing with uh, being conscious is into what we, our awareness of other people too, is sometimes people only do what they know. You know, they've just been doing this for a long time and nobody's ever helped them become aware of a different way of doing things that they might find a higher benefit from. And other people will appreciate it more. You know, so there's, uh, that's how we help each other. We communicate. Instead of just bottling up our problems, bottling up our expectations, hiding our expectations, expecting the other person to be psychic, 
being able to fully be aware of what we want them to do in our life. So I think people are pretty accommodating. Many people are. They. It's not that they're trying to be an asshole. It's not that they're trying to di make disruptions in their life. They're not trying to have uh, a headache all the time. So sacrifice is the highest form. S sacrifice is the highest form of devotion. And getting back to Jesus. Jesus the Christ. You know, because his last name wasn't Christ. It was, well, I don't know what it was. It was Jesus of Nazareth. Right? And then when he reached a certain level of expressing God's love it was called the Christ the crystal crystals are very pure the conduits they amplify things and so through a Christ a crystal a Jesus Christo, <laughs> Yahweh. He's he's known by many names, but you know, but other other teachers have also demonstrated that what Christ did, they can do as well. There are healers, not not usually the ones you see on TV smacking somebody on a forehead, and um, you know, he, that's it's different. There are people who are very pure. There are people who demonstrate love. There are people who are happy. I learned how to meditate from a happy monk. And if you're going to learn something, you should learn from somebody who's setting that example rather than just telling you what they learned in a book somewhere. And, and But then you, you, you see them doing self-destructive uh, behavior or uh, a stimulus is brought into their experience and they they react out of ego rather than consciousness. And that's what we are. We're, we're a balance. We are fallible. But we have to also understand that when we realize that we have failed, that is an opportunity for us to try again. You know, sin, sin is an archery term. I'm sure it's others too, but it's a, a term for missing your mark. And if I'm aiming my arrow, while well, I'm aiming the bow down, sighting the arrow, sending the arrow to its target, my intention is to hit it right in the middle of where, I, where I'm wanting to go. That point. That point of reference. And if I miss, if I hit it way over here, Maybe that's a sin. And that's like right here. I I want to demonstrate God's love. I want to demonstrate forgiveness. I want to demonstrate what it is to live in grace and of a divine nature. But if I'm, I'll give you an example. When I when I was younger, I would smell a pretty girl, <laughs> or I would just smelled a pretty smell and then noticed that it was connected to a coming from a pretty girl and she she walked in a certain way and looked a certain way and I uh, looked awful inviting and so not because I understood who she was as a person what she represented and what she did for the world but because of my personal desire my lust to have that experience in my life I <laughs> I kind of missed the mark. And sometimes that missing the mark uh, would turn into missing that mark every day <laughs> for months or years. And then I realized that I was in a relationship based on 
the initiation of my lust. Not because I was looking for her highest benefit or my own highest uh, end goal, but right now I was trying to please myself. And she was doing the same. So, I mean, it wasn't that it was unconsensual, but we, we, we fought a lot. There was frustrations. There was, there was headaches. There was anger. It almost seemed sometimes like I was walking through hell. Yeah, at least I was walking with a really hot chick, right? But um, still walking through hell. I mean, I, I had to get in fights because of it. I mean, like, I, didn't, I never beat her up, but there were physical altercations because of, you know, basically protecting her. You know, and her, it was, it was, it was, it was a, a difficult time. <laughs> I was drunk a lot, she was drunk a lot. It was uh, something I decided I no, I no longer wanted in my life, and so I changed. And I haven't, I haven't drank anything now for seven, seven or eight years. And I, and I haven't been drunk for over ten years. And I just chose one day that I said, I don't want that in my life anymore. And there was a time in my life that I didn't drink. And so there's a time in my life that I can step away from drinking. And if I demonstrate my will, my middle name is Will. Will I am William, and for the eight, first 18 years of my life, my mom and dad called me Will. I go by more of my legal name now, you know, first legal name, but I never understood what Will was until I started fully exercising my will consciously, and sometimes it's really hard. Because sometimes there are still really, really pretty girls that walk by and they smell really pretty. And there's a certain animal instinct in me that says, rawr. <laughs> but, but then I, I, I think, I'm like, what has this resulted in in my past? And I'm not saying there isn't a pretty girl that someday is going to come up and, and, and be the one that wants... That is in my life because of who she is, not her expression to the world. Not not just her physical expression, right? And it, I just trust that it'll come when it comes. If it comes. And if it doesn't, it's okay, because I'm already happy with in myself. I'm already happy with what I'm doing in my life. I teach yoga now. I teach meditation. I teach people how to find their self. How to forgive themselves. How to forgive others, how to move into tomorrow in a way that we we really desire. We you know we have the opportunity to create any experience in this world that we desire, but we have to do it. We have to ask ourselves these day-to-day -day questions: Why am I doing this a certain way? Why I've lived in an apartment in the middle of a shithole part of. Albuquerque. Albuquerque is a beautiful area, but there are some shithole areas in that city, just like there are almost in every city all the way across the nation and the world. And I paid almost $800 a month to be able to have a little box that was getting robbed and shots are being fired outside and sirens going by every night and drunk people banging on your doors or puking in the hallways. And you're like, are you kidding me? I'm like $800 a month. Now I don't pay anything, not anymore, you know, uh, except property taxes because, you know, I don't want people to come and steal it from me, you know, the, but these people that come and steal, they've got uniforms on and a title, but anyway, that's what I do here is I teach people how to, how to thrive rather than just struggle to survive and we just make different choices and we might even find more efficiency and just a better life experience if we do different things. Please like and subscribe, share, um, re put the little notifi notification bell on, I think it's right there. Um, and it's 
whenever I post up a video, you'll be you'll be uh, alerted to it. Um, and a lot of my videos, you don't have to watch them. You just you know, let them play in the background if you want. You know, accomplish a, a hobby, do a little task. One of the things I like to do when I'm listening to other people's videos, because that's how I've gotten to an understanding of where I'm at now. Is I, well, I spend a lot of time in nature. But I also spend a lot of time listening to other people. I realize that we have two ears and only one mouth for a reason. Because if we speak, we're only regurgitating what we already know. But when we listen, we open ourselves to opportunity of learning and understanding different people's perspectives and different ways of, of, of living life. Again, you know, there's just things that you may not even know that you don't know until you know them, you know?